Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? wrong. I'm going to wait a few more days, and when I'm sure, I'm going to take care of you, Joe. I'm going to kill you. Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so tonight I tell you the bewildering story of Mirage. Fred Adams is an attorney, a promising young attorney. Fred is a specialist, for his practice has been limited to nightclubs and bars. In other words, Fred is what is called a mouthpiece. He steps gaily down the street tonight, unaware of the two men leaning against the black sedan, parked in the shadows between the lampposts. Hi, Fred. What's your hurry? Hmm? Oh, hello, Joe. What are you and Mike doing in this end of town? We're waiting for you, Fred. Thought you uh, might like to take a little ride. Ride? Boss wants to have a little talk with you, Fred. Not tonight. I'm busy. Got an appointment. The boss would like to talk with you. Get in. I tell you I'm busy. I'll drop around tomorrow. What are you so busy about, Fred? How would you like a poke in the nose? Get in the car, Fred. Let go of me, you. We Who's ain't getting. Lost? Come on, get in. Uh, what did you two guys do without a gun? Get in. Okay, okay. Fifteen minutes later, Fred makes his way through the crowded tables of the Swank Tripoli Cafe toward a door marked Manager. He hesitates a moment, glances at the two men beside him, and knocks. Across the room, a beautiful woman sits behind the desk, toying with a long cigarette holder. Uh, come in, Freddy. Come in. Well, we got him, boss. And where do you think he was? <laughs> Over on Park Avenue. <laughs> well, how fancy. Wait outside, Joe. I want to talk to Freddy alone. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, Fred. Well, what's wrong? You in trouble again, Gloria? Would it matter to you if I were in trouble? Of course it would. Where have you been the past week? Has it been a week since I saw you last? You know it has. And a week's too long to suit me, Freddy. Well, you know my phone number. If anything had happened, you could have found me. Doesn't make me very happy to think I have to go out looking for you. Kind of lets me down. Well, for the love of Pete, what's happened? Nothing's happened here at the cafe. What then? You, Fred. It's what you've done. I haven't done anything. Why do you think I paid your way through law school? Well, because you wanted to. Because you needed a lawyer around. That all? I don't know. I thought we were together in this thing for keeps. We are. I'm still your attorney. What else do you expect of me? You have the nerve to sit there and say that? You know how I feel about you. You've always known. We've always been pals. Good friends. Pals? Friends? Oh, Freddy. Look, what are you trying to say? I knew for the past three weeks that you had changed. Couldn't figure it out. But I found out this afternoon. Here it is in the paper. District attorney's daughter to wed young lawyer. Well, what about it? Are you really in love with her? Certainly. Why shouldn't I be? I don't think you are. I knew you were campaigning for the DA in this last election. I know you're ambitious. I think you've got your eyes on a job in the DA's office more than you have on the girl. I tell you, I love Brenda Gibson. You can think whatever you like. Is she pretty? Very pretty. And young. I don't like the way you say that, Fred. 
I'm not so old. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. You're a very beautiful woman, Gloria. Am I? But, well, I don't know what it is. You've done everything in the world for me. No one could ask for more. I've always cared more for you than any woman I've ever known. Until now. But there's something about Brenda that's... Well, she's so different. Go on. I hate to say this to you, but I've got to make you understand. Brenda's intelligent. She comes from a fine family. She's... Well, she has culture. And I came up from the chorus. Oh, Gloria, I didn't expect you to take it this way. How did you expect me to take it? I didn't think you were really in love with me. It never occurred to me that you had any ideas about... about getting married. What do you think I am, a totem pole? I looked upon our association more as a... as a business arrangement. You financed me through school, and when I got up in the money, I'd... I'd pay you back. Oh, Fred. Fred, don't say any more. I know I've been blunt, but... How else can I tell you? What else can I say? There's nothing you can say. But I'll tell you something. You're getting out of your element. You don't belong there. You belong here with me. And if you marry her, you'll live to regret the day you met her. Now, look. Don't be like that. Don't be a hard loser. You'd be better off dead. You don't mean that, Gloria. No. No, Fred. I, I didn't mean that. But, honey, please go before I say any more. I know I have a chance but... Please go. I'm sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. Goodbye, Fred. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Gloria. <laughs> now, a week later... The papers are filled with stories and pictures of Fred and Brenda and the district attorney and parties, dinners and teas. Read them, Gloria. Pour over them. Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Adams this and Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Adams that. Read them, Gloria. Read them and weep. But on a train to Miami... Darling, after we spend a few days in Miami, we can fly over to Nassau. Father has a place there, and I know some wonderful people. We can have a great time. Fred. Hmm? Oh, what did you say? <laughs> Snap out of it, darling. We're on our honeymoon. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know we're going to have a swell time. Uh, my sister Nella's spending the summer at Nassau. Why didn't Nella come home for the wedding? She was supposed to be a bridesmaid. I told you, dear. You can't always get transportation just when you want it these days. But after all, Ella's your only sister. She could have made an extra effort. What are you thinking about? Oh, business. Business? <laughs> business? I was thinking about my new job. How did your father happen to make a place for me in the DA's office? Oh, I suppose he's a capable young attorney. Did you ask him to appoint me? <laughs> well, I may have had something to do with it. But I wanted you to start out right. You don't mind, do you? Certainly not. It was swell of you. I only hope I can make good. You will. And who knows, maybe you'll be the district attorney yourself someday. I hope so. At least I'll break my neck trying. Well, let's forget about everything for the next two weeks but us. Hmm? I love you very much, Brenda. Oh, darling, I'll spend all my waking moments trying to make you happy. Thanks, darling. You'll never regret the day you met me. What did you say? I said you'd never regret the day you met me. Well, I should say I won't. Not a chance in a million. Now the happy honeymoon is over. And Fred and Brenda are back home. And Fred is in the district attorney's office and progressing nicely. But Gloria, poor Gloria, still sits in her office at the Tripoli and broods over her face. She scans every item in the society columns, searching for news about Fred and Brenda. And every item, every picture, nurtures her resentment. And her resentment slowly turns to hate. And finally, something snaps in her mind. And she begins to harbor thoughts of revenge. Revenge. Joe! Joe! 
yelling about, Gloria? I wasn't yelling. Close the door. It sounded like yelling to me. I said I wasn't yelling. Okay, okay. So I apologize. Sit down. Oh, look, Gloria, what's eating you? Why don't you get out of this office? Go out and visit with the customers the way you used to. Yeah, why should I? Well, they all miss you, honey. They're all asking, where's Gloria? Where's Gloria? I've run out of excuses. But I didn't call you in here to talk about the business. Well, maybe not, but I thought it was time I said something. Where's the evening paper? I, uh, I didn't get it. Why not? Oh, look, Gloria, come on, snap out of it. Why don't you quit hunting for news about Fred? You're only driving yourself nutty. He was a nice guy, but he's gone. He's married, so forget him. I can't. Well, you could try. Not so easy as that. After all, he ain't the only man walking around. There's one or two others, you know. Yeah, who? Well, there's one guy in particular who might get your mind off Fred if you... Well, if you just give him a chance. Who do you mean? Well, I know I ain't as good looking as Fred. And I ain't got his fancy manners. But, well, I like you just as much as he did and probably a lot more. Sorry, Joe. Well, at least I wouldn't walk out on you for another day. Yeah, and if you did, I wouldn't blame you. No? No. I blame the other woman. She had no right to take him away from me. He belonged to me. Ah, oh, Gloria, please forget it. I won't. I can't. I made up my mind. Huh? What are you thinking? Where's your car? Outside. Where's your gun? In my pocket. Some people are giving a party at their country place tonight for Fred and his wife. But... Gloria. But Fred was called out of town on business. They're giving the party anyway, and she'll be there. Brenda will be there. So what? You'll wait for her and follow her when she leaves. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nothing doing. I ain't bumping off no dame. Sit down and shut up. You're crazy. You've gone absolutely nutty. I'm getting out of You're here. You're driving me to that house. I won't. No? I wonder if the police would be interested in knowing who killed Lefty Hammond. Gloria, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Okay. Okay, you win. All right. Go get in your car. I'll go out the back way and meet you in the alley. Gloria and Joe sit in the car in the deep shadows of a spreading tree. The hours drag on, and then about 1.30 in the morning, the party breaks up and the cars begin to leave. Finally, Brenda comes through the gate driving her own coupe. There she is. That's Brenda. Get going, Joe. Is she alone? Yeah, she's alone. I sure wish you'd change your mind. Don't get too close to her. I ain't got nothing against her or Fred either. What good is this going to do you? You wouldn't understand. I think you've gone off your beam. Maybe you're cracked. Shut up. I'm not crazy if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Drop back a little. They say crazy people never think they're batty. Look, you might feel different about this in the morning. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Ooh. They cut it out. Where do you get off slapping people? Move along, you're losing her. Lay off of that rough step, or I might decide to change my mind about the whole thing. You won't change your mind. It'd be funny if something happened to you. If anything happens to me, there's a letter in my safe that tells all about you. So you better see that I get back to the Tripoli. Okay, I was only kidding. We'll come into that long stretch. No cars behind us, and none coming. Step on it now. Run her off the road. Now, run her off in the ditch. Then what's the idea? Are you trying to wreck me? Get out of the car. What is it? Hold up? Get out and shut up. I haven't anything. Just a couple of rings. Take a ring, Joe. Well, well, this is a new one. A woman bandit. Any money in your purse? A few dollars. Take the money and scatter the rest of the things around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now ruffle her hair up, Joe. Go on, muss her up. You take your hands oh, off Gloria, me. Oh, Gloria, have a heart. Okay, okay, I'll muss her up. But they're good. Who oh, are you? What's the meaning of this? You got what you want. Now, why don't you let me alone? I'll let you alone, Mrs. Adams. Who are you? Start walking. What? Start walking all through those trees. I won't. Oh, stop. Stop it. Get moving. Yes, it's all right. What are you going to do? See to it that you don't do any more chiseling in, Mrs. Fred Adams. Huh. Well, I don't know what you're talking Walk. about. Walk. Better have it, Joe. Well, what are you throwing for? <laughs> Listen, give me that gun. Well. 
the last of Mrs. Adams. She's, she's dead. Here's your gun. Get out of here. Well, what's the matter? What are you waiting for? Oh, I, I'm kind of dizzy. I'm kind of sick. I, I can't drive, Gloria. You better drive. Huh. I thought you were experienced at this business. If I didn't see you do it, nobody in the world could have made me believe it. Nobody. <laughs> about it in this morning's paper, Joe? No, no, not a thing. And it was the night before last, too. I can't understand it. Are you sure she was dead? Of course I'm sure. See, what do you suppose happened? She couldn't have walked away. Hey, maybe they haven't found her in the car yet, huh? That isn't possible. That's the main highway. Hundreds of cars pass her in the course of a few hours. Yeah, but maybe they just seen the car and thought it was a wreck, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Hey, better lay off that stuff, Joe. You've been drinking for two days now. Yeah, but I need it. I'm jittery. I got the willies like I never had before. Hey, maybe I ought to drive out to, out to the place and see if the car's gone. Okay, huh? okay. Get back as soon as you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't get it off my mind. I don't mind telling you. I'm scared. Go on and quit talking so much. Hey, Gloria. Gloria, I went out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. What'd you see? Nothing. Nothing. The car was gone. I looked all around the spot, and there wasn't a sign of anything. No trinkets, no blood marks, no nothing. Then they must have found her. Yeah, but why don't they say something about it in the papers? If they just say something, I could stand it. It's driving me nuts. Are you going to lay off that stuff? No, no, I ain't. I need it. I don't need it. Yeah? Well, I don't know what you're made of. But whatever it is, it's sure tough. I never knew a woman could be as tough. I'll never forget about this as long as I live. Ah, you're a jellyfish. I can understand one guy rubbing out another guy for doing something against the gang, but I never thought I'd see a woman do a thing like that and for no good reason. There was a reason to shut up. I couldn't have done a thing like it. You've got to turn me in first. There she was, lying there all covered with shut slop. Shut Ah, this stuff doesn't seem to have any effect on me. It's just like water. Get hold of yourself. That poor kid. I never felt so lousy in all my life. Did you get the late papers? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, here. Well, anything in it? No, nothing. Not a word. Maybe we didn't do it, Gloria. Maybe it was just a nightmare. No, huh? no, we did it all right and proper. If I don't hear something soon, I'll go crazy. Hey, wait. What? Uh, what is it? Did they find her? No. Well, what do you know about that? Well, what is it? What is it? Look at this picture. Holy smoke, it's her. It's her. Her and Fred. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Adams attend the races. When? When? Yesterday. It isn't possible. Oh, it's her. It's her. I know it's her, but, but how could she? How could she? She's dead. Hey. Hey. What's the matter? Maybe. Maybe it's her. Her, her ghost? Oh, don't be silly. I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving town. Look. You're in the other papers. The day before yesterday. Fred Adams and wife attend tennis match. And another picture. What can this mean? What do they say something about it? Yeah, you see, she is getting you down, too. Oh, please, please, Gloria, let's pull out. It's uncanny. I can't believe it. It's in the papers. You've got to believe it. Did you double-cross me, Joe? What do you mean? Did you have blanks in that gun? Blanks? I certainly hate to get hit with what I had in that gun. She's dead, I tell you. She'd better be. What'll we do? We'll wait. That's all. Just wait. Okay. But I don't think I can stand it. I'm going to pieces. <laughs> They did wait. They waited for two more days. And Joe, fortified with his bottle, was able to hang on. Then Gloria began to crack under the strain of waiting. Joe, I can't stand it any longer. I've got to do it. Do what? I'm going to call Fred's apartment and see if she's there. Huh? I wouldn't. Hello? Is this the Adams apartment? Is Mrs. Adams there? Why, an old friend from out of town. Thank you. She's there. Holy gee. She answered. I heard her. You lied to me, Joe. I didn't lie. I had bullets in that gun. I saw, I saw her. She was dead. There's something wrong. Terribly wrong. I'm going to wait a few more days. I'll check again. And when I'm sure, I'm going to take care of you, Joe. What do you mean? 
I'm going to kill you. Ah, that's crazy. I don't think it would be safe to have you walking around and talking. But Gloria, listen to me. Come on, we're going to my apartment and wait. It's always brown to bake sooner or later. Ah, but I'd rather get out of town. You're coming with me to my apartment. Get moving. <laughs> Then, three more days of sleepless waiting. The tenseness grows and grows. The suspense is almost stifling. Poor Joe can neither sleep nor eat, and Gloria becomes pale and drawn. Then Joe finally emerges and goes on a little scouting tour about town to see what he can learn. Then, on the next night, a knock at Gloria's apartment door. Who? Who is it? It's me, Fred. Fred? Wait a minute. Hello, Gloria. What do you want, Fred? May I come in? I'd like to talk to you. Of course. Come in. I know it's rather late, but I had to talk to you. What about? I never expected to see you around here again. Well, I was a bit lonely. I had to talk to someone. Lonely? Well, sit down, Fred. Thanks. You look kind of tired, Gloria. What's wrong? Well, since you mentioned it, you look a bit weary yourself. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing much. I sent you a check clearing up what I owed you. Did you get it? Yeah. There is something wrong, Fred. What is it? Oh, just a little trouble, that's all. What sort of trouble? Domestic. Domestic trouble? Why, what do you mean? <laughs> that isn't... Isn't possible? Is that what you were going to say? Why, yes, I... I thought you were quite happy with your wife. Well, things can develop suddenly. I certainly found that out. Well, what happened? Or do you want to tell me? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I guess that's why I came here. You were always so darned understanding. You always knew the answers to things. But what happened? Well, I guess I really didn't belong in the upper crust. You had it figured out about right. Everything was all right until Brenda started to shape my career shape your career. Oh, yeah, she had everything all planned for me. She and her father had it all figured out. I wanted to go into the DA's office and move up on my own initiative. But they didn't want it that way. They wanted me to start out as a big shot. Did she leave you? Well, yes. We agreed to disagree. Well, where is she now? At her father's place, I suppose. When... When did she leave? Yesterday. Yesterday. Are you sure it was yesterday? Of course. Why do you ask that? Well, no reason, I suppose. I, I just can't believe it. It seems a shame. I'm very sorry for you, Fred. Believe me, I know how you feel. I was let down with a dull thud once. Were you? You should know. Oh, Gloria, I was such a fool. You were so right, I should have listened to you. You could see what was coming, and I, I was too dumb to realize it. Have you forgiven me? Oh, yes. Yes, Fred. I'd have to forgive you. I love you so much. I've never been able to forget you for a single moment. I'm sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. Fred, I've got a strange feeling. I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling you're not telling me the truth. What? You mean you don't believe me? There's something you haven't told me. What is it? Why, nothing. I've told you everything. I don't believe you, Fred. Very well, Gloria. I... Well, I'm in a tough spot. Brenda hasn't gone away. She's dead. Dead? What on earth do you mean? Yes, they... She was found dead beside her car a number of days ago. The day after we had a nasty argument, but I didn't do it. There have been many threats against the district attorney and members of his family. It, it may have been any one of a number of persons. But nothing's been said about it in the papers? Yes, I know that. They've purposely kept it quiet, hoping the real killer will show his hand. That's silly. Why should he? I don't know. Oh, darling, it's all such a mess. I'm completely worn out. I know they suspect me, and, well, uh, I don't know what to do about it. Gloria, Gloria, I seen her. I seen her. Who? She was standing under the lamppost at the corner. She spoke to me. She said, hello, Joe. How's Gloria? Shut up, you're drunk. No, no, no. It was her. It was Brenda. 
I ran for the elevator, and as the doors were closing, she was coming in the lobby. She was terrible, all pale and awful looking. Simple, then you got the snakes. No, no, it was her, and she's coming up here. It's her. It's her. I don't want to see her. I can't look at her. I can't stand it. Joe, turn on those lights. I won't. Turn on those lights. Never mind the lights. I can see you. All three of you. Brenda. What? What do you want? So you're Gloria. Yes, I met you for the first time not many nights ago. On a deserted highway. So it is her. Come out of the corner, Joe. I can see you. Joe, the man who pulled the trigger. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. What do you want? So Fred, you were in on this too. You wanted me out of the way because of blood. You were back of the whole thing. No, Brenda, no. I, I had nothing to do with it. You decided you'd made a mistake? You wanted to. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Tell him, Joe. Tell him how you shot me down. You had the gun. Tell him. No, how... no, no, no. Keep away from me. Keep away. Don't. Don't. I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell. I didn't do it. She did it. Gloria did it. I couldn't. I didn't have the nerve. He's lying. I didn't do it. Go ahead, Joe. Spill it. I ain't going to take a rap for this. Gloria went off her beam when you married Brenda. She went crazy with jealousy. She knew about that party and she made me drive her out there. We followed Brenda and ran her off the road. She tried to make me kill her, but I couldn't. I fired wild, and Gloria grabbed the gun from me and let her have it. He's lying. How could she make you? Do it? She threatened me. She's got something. Shut on up! Me. Shut up! I don't care. She can tell what she knows, but I can prove she killed Brenda. I wore gloves, and Gloria didn't. I still have the gun, and the only fingerprints on it are Gloria. You did it! I figured she might try to double cross me. What about it, Gloria? All oh, right, all right. I did it. I did it. I shot her. I couldn't stand it any longer. Turn on the lights, Joe. Hey. She ain't dead. It's her. Brenda ain't dead. Oh, good Lord. Oh, yes. Brenda's dead, all right. Quite dead. And what is she? You'll find out, Gloria. What a strange quirk of fate. It was your money that caused all this. It was you who put me through law school so that I could defend you. And now I'll be forced to be your prosecutor. I'm sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Well, Gloria, you've come to the end of your rope. Things didn't work out as you'd planned. You really killed Brenda that night, but Fred got a brilliant idea. He had Nella, Brenda's twin sister, come up from Nassau and pause as poses his wife. That's how all the pictures appeared in the papers. And it was Nella who just walked in on you and got a confession. And how did Fred know you were the one? <laughs> there were several suspects. But you, Gloria, made the mistake of phoning for Brenda too many times, and the police traced your call. Too bad, Gloria. Jealousy is a terrible thing. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production is composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week... Sunday at 10.15, I, the Whistler, will return to tell you another strange story. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>